So a few months back, I was at a camp out with scouts and was trying to lock my center differential just to give it some exercise and keep the seals lubricated. Um, and I started getting faults. Uh, didn't want to didn't want to lock and unlock. Uh, as soon as that happened, I stopped. Thankfully, it stayed unlocked. And then when I was doing the brakes not too long ago, I noticed when I had the Toyota TechStream hooked up, I was getting a code. So it's time to deal with this guy. So uh, this is the center diff lock actuator. I'm sure you've probably seen some videos on it already if this is something you're looking for. So we're going to take this off today, take it apart, clean it up, put new seals in it, um, and then put it back on. So this guy is basically electronic part of your overall transfer case, right? So um, it does the, the locking of the center differential within the transfer case. So we've got, I believe, let's see, I've got one, two, looks like these are all actually 12s and three on the other side. We're gonna take these bolts off, pull it out, rotate it, get it loose, and then we'll take a look at it. Also, of course, as always, don't forget to disconnect your electrical stuff first. this guy off here. Three bolts off. I'm pulling backwards away from the transfer case. There we go. Now, uh, let me grab a... Come on, baby. Oh. I think that's going to be part of the problem, too. My vacuum hose actuator totally or this vacuum hose completely trashed split open came off so we'll need to replace that probably a big part of the problem we'll go ahead and take it off anyways and get it rebuilt and cleaned up anyways as long as we're here to get it fixed get new seals i can never get this thing off there it is Decent amount of force, working it back and forth. There we go. All right, let's get it on the workbench. All right, so here we go. I bought this complete seal kit on Amazon for like 20 bucks, something like that. So we got fresh seals to put in it, but we're gonna go ahead and take it apart and take this guy off. Um, and then take all these screws out, take it apart. Let's take a look on the inside. Make sure there's no oil in it, clean it up, grease it up. And we'll put it back together. All right, so right away, taking the little screw out. Take this guy off. So here's our first seal. Here's our second seal. There's nothing here. I'm going to take all these screws out. All right, so here's what we've got. I have to say it looks pretty good. Everything looks pretty dry. It's still greased up. That's white lithium grease on there. That's a great sign. Um, I think I'm done. You know, if you if this was full of oil, you might want to take it out. I may add just a touch more grease, but this all looks like it's in good shape. Everything's still greased well, so uh, there's no need to break it. We'll put it back together. Fair warning, this guy is tough to get out. Um, so I've got a little pick in there and I'm trying, I'm picking it from under the side and getting it out of there. It's not easy to get out. So you might want to get yourself a little pick or something before you take this on. There we go. Got it. So it's got a very tough outer piece that almost presses in. So you really kind of got to get up under this lip from inside and pull it out. We'll replace this. I'm not sure why they send you two seals. I'm going to mic them and see if they appear to be the same, but I'm going to mic them and make sure. And then we'll install the new seal in here. Well, no need to mic them. They are exactly the same. So I guess you get an extra with this kit, interestingly enough. There we go. So I just gently pressed it in, easy enough. Now we've got our new seal that'll keep it from leaking. We'll put our new O-ring on the outside and then we'll go reinstall it. Okay, so put this little, put the large O-ring, the new one on. Put this little keeper there. Got a little play, but that should go away when we fully bolt it in. We go clean out the inside. And at the mating surface of this, 
um, get any excess oil out of there. We put it back on and we'll check. Okay, so just while we're here, if you have not changed your transfer case fluid, you should do so. There's your drain plug, there's your fill plug. I actually did mine not too long ago, so I'm really not that worried about it, but procedure is take this out first, that way that you know that you can get to it before you drain all your fluid. Okay, so it sounds funny. Take out the fill plug first, take out the drain plug, drain all your fluid, put the drain plug back in, and you're gonna fill this guy up until he starts to overflow out of this hole and then put him in. And you need to do that on flat level ground. So you may have to shimmy in here from the passenger side to do it. And then I recommend getting a piece of vinyl hose and connecting it to the end of, if you look at my um, filling of the transmission and transfer case video, I show you how to do it. Um, get a little fill hose that goes up and over and goes in and then you can just squeeze the bottle. Don't try to get the bottle up here and fill it up. You'll, that's a nightmare. Get a little bit of a hose to stick on the end of the nozzle and just squeeze it in and fill it up. It takes about two um, bottles of fluid. Uh, so that's how you do it. Um, and you can always check it by taking this off and making sure that it's topped up here. Um, I'll do that in a little bit uh, when the car is down off jack stand. Before I do any of this, I need to fix this vacuum hose. Good amount of extra. We're gonna cut this bad end off. We'll put some tape around it to help kind of reinforce it and then we'll put it on. So at some point my camera fell over and I'm not sure how much I missed. So uh, putting this guy back on, he went on a lot smoother than I expected. Um, just gently rocking it and eventually getting it in place. Try not to pull it back out. That actually popped the spring out of my little, the new seal we installed. So I put it back, but I can see why they send an extra. So once we get it in there, make sure you connect your vacuum line first before you do anything, clean it up. Make sure it's, I cut the end off of mine, put some electrical tape on it, plugged it in, um, slide it on nice and easy, get all three bolts started, tighten them down, not too tight, and then collect, connect our electrical. There we go. So now we're gonna go back, I'm gonna drop the car, make sure that it's level, and I'm gonna check the fluid level on this top um, uh, fill hole. We're gonna make sure that it's full all the way up to that fill hole, and then we'll drive it around and test it. All right, so we got the GX on the ground. We've got the suspension set to high so I can get under here. Measured it is quite level. So here's our fill, as we saw before. This is a 24 millimeter. I just loosened it with a wrench. They're both 24s. Those are, I think, all the diff plugs. Millimeter. Hey, that's good. So we're, we're good, we're full. All right, so I didn't record the first time, but with it in neutral and sitting, when I hit the fender diff lock button, it actuates. 
the very first time I did it, I got all three lights. I got VSC, traction control, a couple others. Um, but it was able to come on and then I was able to turn it off successfully. I just pressed it. Um, I had to turn the car off and turn it back on. I think it needed to do an initial set. But ever since then, it's behaving uh, as it should. It's engaging with no problems uh, very quickly. So I turned it on, there we go. No problems, turn it off. Boom. So for me, that fixed it.